if you're going to work around fuel and doing fuel tests and, and um, wiring and, and things like that, make sure you disconnect the battery. I do so much work on mine, I have a quick di disconnect. If you're having uh, idle issues or drivability issues on a, on a, on your crossfire, first the very first thing you need to do is determine what your fuel pressure is because beyond that nothing really matters if you aren't getting somewhere between 9 and 13 psi uh, there's no need moving any further but you need to know exactly what your fuel pressure is and most of the time on one of these cars it should be around around 11 12 something around there over 13 is too much under 9 too low And when you when you check your fuel pressure, you're probably going to have to take your your breather assembly off because it's very tight up underneath here. But when you take your breather assembly off, you'll have to unplug this rear vacuum port for the Thermax system, and that's going to have to be capped off right here. You'll just have to buy a little rubber cap and make your own, however you want to go about doing that. But or otherwise you won't get a good reading uh, mainly because the pressure regulator uh, has a diaphragm in it that relies on fuel injector pressure and air cleaner pressure to operate properly so if this nipple is not plugged off when you unplug your your thermac you won't you won't get a good reading you can go down to the store and uh, the uh, auto parts store and buy a, uh, a little package of these rubber fittings for running vacuum tests. Uh, this is a cap that I use for the Thermac vacuum port on the back of the rear throttle body. I, I keep it handy because actually if you're going to run tests on your car without your Thermac breather assembly it on you should probably you need to plug off that vacuum port and the reason is you you're really going to get a you're going to get it's designed to work with the Thermac intact you're going to get some you're going to get some vacuum going on back you could have an actual backfire it'll blow blow fi fire right up the out of the throttle bodies uh, just giving you a word of a word of uh, caution but hang on to this. Put it in a safe place. It should be running about about 12, about 12 psi. It's about between 9 and 13 psi. It's running right at 12 psi. But if you you uh, check the fuel pressure on your Crossfire, you should check the fuel pressure according to the factory service manual on the crossover tube between the two throttle bodies. Factory service manual section 6E226 fuel pressure test point front injector rear injector that's the crossover tube shows the test point in the center This uh, front throttle body has a compensator in it that compensates for lack of fuel pressure for the fuel traveling over to the to the uh, rear uh, throttle body, and then this rear throttle body has a pressure regulator in it because you're always going to get more fuel pumped up to the throttle bodies than the actual throttle the uh, the engine needs. So the pressure regulator here will will uh, send the excess fuel back to the fuel tank through this 5 16 inch uh, return line right here. But the factory service manual calls for the pressure, uh, fuel pressure test to be between the two throttle bodies and that's the reason why you might be getting uh, you might be getting 13, 12, 13 pounds delivered up to the front throttle body but that doesn't mean you're going to be getting it over to the second one could have, excuse me, could have a problem with your compensator. One thing to keep in mind when you're 
when you're working with the fuel pressure on a crossfire injection engine, you've got a pressure compensator on the, the front throttle body, and then you've got a pressure regulator on the rear throttle body that are trying to maintain a fuel pressure between 9 and 13 PSI. The problem on the crossfire is if you're below 9 PSI, you're going to have, you, as it says in the factory service manual, you're going to have poor performance. If it's too high, you're going to have detonation and excessive odor. It's, you don't have a lot of room to work with. It's somewhere between 9 and 13 PSI. Uh, the factory service manual says the vehicle will run on 9 PSI, but I kind of I kind of hesitate on that. I would think probably it might run on 9 PSI if it were brand new and everything was working exactly as it was designed to work. But on when older like it is, I, I doubt 9 PSI would do very good at all. It might run, uh, but it's not going to be drivable. Another thing to keep in mind when you run your pressure test is your battery voltage because of the electronic con the fuel injectors do not control the amount of fuel that they're they're bursting. The electronic control module controls the amount of fuel and the electronic control module is looking for a reference voltage. So if it isn't seeing what it needs to see it will compensate for it, but it's going to struggle. Uh, according to the factory service manual, when battery voltage is low, the ECM can compensate for weak spark to the distributor, but it will increase the amount of fuel, increase the idle, and increase the dwell time. So the problem is, if you're alternator and everything <laughs> it just gets complicated but if your alternator and everything are working uh, it's going to cause some issues with your test it's better if your your battery voltage and everything is is where it needs to be